Hi there, I'm Kev Felton. Uh, I'm a driver trainer with many years experience in both uh, driving efficiently and driving electric vehicles. Now, one of the key elements of driving efficiently in an electric vehicle is in anticipating and planning ahead and keeping space. So that you're being proactive rather than reactive. You're not rushing up to things and uh, having to react. So one thing to be mindful of with EVs is the penalty for higher speeds. Uh, in an internal combustion engine car, if you're doing 70 instead of 50, the penalty in uh, fuel consumption is around 15%. However, in an EV, that same 70 mile an hour instead of 50 will result in something around along the lines of a 36% reduction in your range or battery efficiency. So another thing to mention with electric vehicles is, is heating. Um, now, when you're in your internal combustion engine vehicle, you turn the heat on, you're tapping into the, the waste heat coming from the engine. Now our electric vehicle doesn't have an engine, so we don't have that luxury. So it provides, it's on a separate electrical heating circuit that comes through. So it's like plugging in an electric fan heater in your home, um, and that's a similar thing. So it does have quite an effect on the range or the efficiency of an electric vehicle. Most modern EVs will have heat pumps, but even so that still connects onto a, or has an effect on the efficiency of the vehicle. So what you'll find with most EVs or even the, even the basic models they will come with heated seats, even heated rear seats in some instances and heated steering wheels on the basis that it's better to heat the incumbent rather than waste the heat and then heat the whole cabin. So EVs will have um, usually have an eco button uh, amongst the, the range of driving modes. Um, what that tends to do is to limit to a degree some of the non-safety critical functions such as your heating, air conditioning, etc. And um, some, some EVs will also have an Eco Plus setting as well. That will tend to limit the speed. Another key element for efficiency in an electric vehicle in uh, urban driving is maximising the use of the regenerative braking. So um, an electric motor is the same as a generator. So when you're not using the power, you're putting, uh, converting the movement, slowing down, back into electricity and charging the battery up. So you're able, by coming off the throttle, um, using the regenerative braking, you're able to capture something like 75 to 80% of the movement, slowing down the energy. So that's, that's good for uh, maximizing the range as well. So most um, electric vehicles, you can adjust the levels of regenerative braking. In the Kia here, today we've got these paddles up beneath or behind the steering wheel that we can adjust the regenerative from three to zero. Um, on a Tesla and an e-tron perhaps, it's through the screen, the big screen that you get with it, or it could be uh, in the Nissan Leaf where it's, it's down here. Um, so there's all ways, mostly, most EVs you can adjust that. Now, there's no disadvantage to being in a higher level of, of regenerative braking because the motor can only do one thing at a time. It can only be power or it can be regenerative braking. So it, it, it's not gonna make you go slower if you're in a higher level of regen. So if you're an experienced driver and you're just moving into an electric car for the first time, um, the higher level of regenerative braking may well be a lot stronger deceleration than you're used to. Um, that could have its safety implications as well because you're slowing down quicker than what you're expecting to. So it might be advisable to start off in the lower levels of regen and work your way up. It doesn't take too long to get used to it, but once you've got, once you've mastered it, again, it's going to be um, beneficial for your efficiency and range for your vehicle and your battery.